Over the course of the last couple of years, we've seen an increasing number of mammals be associated with infections with high path avian influenza. You can look at the USDA website and see species that have been associated with infections and in some cases with serious disease. What we haven't seen before are any of our production animals and specifically livestock affected with high path avian influenza. I've talked to virologists, veterinarians, state and federal health officials across the country and I don't think anyone anticipated this as a finding. Relatively early in the outbreak, we actually started to see high path avian influenza in some mammals, wild mammals as well. And in these cases, we were mostly looking at juveniles that were scavengers or other carnivores. So skunks, raccoons, fox, and we saw evidence of disease in young animals of these species that was associated with high path avian influenza. We think that the exposure in most of the wild mammals have been because they've either consumed dead birds that were infected, or they've just had really close contact with a group of sick birds. In this case, it's really unusual because dairy cattle, we don't often think about spending a lot of time with wild birds. And so this was a bit unexpected because the mechanism of transmission is unclear. How did it get from a wild bird into our dairy cattle? What's unique and somewhat concerning about this situation is that it wasn't a one-time event or it didn't halt with that single transmission event. We now know that we're seeing cow-to-cow -cow transmission. There's still a lot that's yet to be sorted out in terms of how transmission occurs from a wild bird to cattle. What we do know is that there does seem to be transmission within cattle herds once it infects the first cow. In this current outbreak, with this current strain of influenza virus, we've seen really high morbidity and mortality, sickness and death, in wild and domestic birds. That's something that set it apart from other uh, previous avian influenza strains. Although we are seeing infection in some clinical disease in cattle, it's important to note that this appears to be a self-limiting disease. That is, the cattle improve on their own within a couple of week period and eventually get back to close to normal or normal milk production. We know it's a potentially zoonotic agent. By zoonotic, I mean a virus that can spread from animals to people. There have historically been other avian influenza strains that have been more associated with transmission in people. But to be clear, with this current strain, the risk appears to be very low. There have been two cases to date, both in individuals with sustained and close contact with infected animals. The National Veterinary Services Laboratories of USDA, as well as the CDC, are closely monitoring the sequence data from each of the infected animals to get an understanding of whether or not we see any changes in the virus that might be associated with increased likelihood of spread within people. We have not seen that to date. That said, if you see sick or dead birds, do not handle them directly, but rather reach out to officials for support. For our farmers and producers out there, there are two really important things. One is to exercise biosecurity. And the second is to monitor animal health closely. Looking for drops in milk production, animals off feed, uh, tacky feces or diarrhea. Those are all clinical signs. Reach out to your veterinarian and for veterinarians, I encourage you to reach out to your veterinary diagnostic laboratory or to the state animal health agency to get further direction.